time he talks about the sheep. Uh, I tend to think that uh, the little interpretation of this, as it follows one another in, uh, 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 systematically, is that there's a message as Jesus addresses Peter. In the first message, as Jesus said that, feed my lamp, Jesus is uh, actually emphasizing on the, the nature of their being. That the lamb uh, are immature, the lamb are vulnerable, and uh, the lamb are in need of uh, tending and in need of care that is required to them. Because I believe they are young uh, and very small in their uh, uh, size. And uh, when Jesus says the second time, tells Peter, feed my sheep, I believe uh, that it's another level uh, of Christian in, a, in the church that uh, Jesus is trying to address. Feeding the sheep, uh, in my own interpretation, is uh, a level at which uh, the Christians are quite mature and the shepherd has a responsibility to take care of them in terms of managing them. Managing them in number, managing their discipline, and making sure that at some point you know them by their names. Praise be to God. Now the third time when Jesus tells Peter, feed my lamb, or feed my sheep, at this moment in time, is a priest or a servant responsibility to make sure that he feeds the people or feeds the congregation well, spiritually taking care of them, making sure that the word he is passing to the uh, congregation is the right message. And above all, taking care of the needs of the people. And when I say this, of course, it starts with uh, the priest, but it also rolls back to us, the people who have subscribed to Jesus Christ. Jesus is addressing us also, that we have a responsibility to make sure that we uh, take care of the fault. When you subscribe to Jesus Christ, it means that you are part of the people who God has called to execute the Great Commission. And so you have a responsibility. You make sure you handle humanity with high esteem, making uh, uh, knowing that we are not the same. There are people who are very young in salvation, and so when we are handling them, we have to be very careful. We have to make sure that we handle them the way they are. Not going out and talking bad about them, but making sure that we are able to walk with them until uh, they grow. Praise be to God. And so as Jesus addresses uh, Peter, Jesus is addressing us today. He is talking to you and me as a Christian. Because most of the time here, uh, you realize that most people are wounded because of how the fellow Christians handle them. Others are mocked and they feel out of space because their fellow Christians at one point or another, because of their behavior, they are handled badly. And so they feel that they are not, they're out of space 
as far as the ministry is concerned. And believe, uh, and uh, you know that God has called us the way we are. However weak you are, however strong you are, because you cannot be the same, God has given you a responsibility to make sure that we execute the Great Commission and at the end of the day, lead people to eternal life. The Bible says in Psalm 95, For he is our God, and we are the sheep of his pasture, and the sheep of his attend. All that today you listen to his voice. He said that I am a good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And John 10, 9 says that I am the gate. Whoever uh, enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. Praise be to God. Even as I say this, I do not know whether there's a place you find yourself. Because all of us, if we are sensitive as Christians, when our word of, the word of God passes, you need to identify with it. And where you are wrong, if your spirit is alert, you need to feel sorry and feel that I am not doing the right thing. I ought to change my position as a Christian. Praise be to God. The third time, we noticed that Peter was grieved because Jesus said to him the third time, Do you love me? Brothers and sisters, our, sometimes our feelings have to be hurt so that our conscience can be cleared and our love to be confirmed. Praise be to God. Sometimes things can happen in our lives so that the name of the Lord will be glorified, so that there will be change in our lives. So just as Peter had denied Jesus three times, the reason Jesus now asked Peter to affirm his love three times. This made Peter sorrowful, but it made him to move on without the burden of guilt and regret. Brothers and sisters, sin, one can be able to manage. How do you manage sin? You can manage sin by uh, confession. You go and confess your sin. As the Bible says that as, the, as far as the east is from the west, so shall you forgive us our sins and remember them no more when you confess your sins to the Lord. Rightfully confession, realize that God has forgiven you completely. But guilt, guilt is very dangerous. Guilt is sad. Guilt has made many people die. Because guilt, you die with it. It's something that you've committed, a sin that you've committed, and you do not know who to tell. And so you are quite dying with your burden. Praise be to God. Peter was very guilt because of what he had done. But by Jesus coming, he took that burden that he had in his heart and that guilt and that regret. Even though he was very hurt, he was very angry, but Jesus ministering to him, that burden was taken away. Jesus can take that burden away from you. That guilt conscience that is eating you every morning, every day, as you wake up, as I minister to you, maybe you have a guilt in your heart, Jesus is there to take away uh, that guilt that is eating uh, you. Brothers and sisters, this is a message to us this morning. As I said, and I repeat again, 
this is a message to us. To preach to the people about the good news of Christ. To attend to the needy. Have interest with the welfare of other people. Let me ask you, when did you last uh, talk to someone who has a challenge? As a Christian. Or you are self-centered. It is you, you, and you alone. You do not want to know even the next person you are seated to what is happening in their lives. And maybe they are here, they have not even taken breakfast. Uh, they are trusting God that someone somewhere will be sent by God to be able to minister to them. Remember, God will not come from heaven to minister to that person. God has to use you or another person to be able to minister to that person. Imagine the cheapest that you can afford is only 50 shillings. And maybe if you are with that person and have a fellowship with that person and tell him, Why are, how are you doing? Tell that uh, uh, sister, how are you doing? What is happening? I see you coming in this service and maybe they'll open up to you and tell you, my sister, I have not even taken a cup of tea. You have a cup of tea. And that way, you will have ministered to the creation of Christ. And that way, you will have executed the Great Commission. You will have done what Jesus is telling Peter. And he's telling us today, feed my sheep. There's a lesson three or four lessons that we can learn from this message. The one lesson that we can learn is that Jesus embraces us despite our weak nature. Jesus embraces you, embraces me, despise, despite our weak nature. We know very well Peter had a weakness. Actually, uh, in uh, many a times with Jesus, Ali Choma, Kabisa, at some point, he had told Jesus that even if the others are not going with you, I will walk with you today. And he displayed his anger. He cut one of uh, the people who are picking Jesus, uh, his uh, ear. And Jesus told him that this warfare is not physical. It is a spiritual warfare. We know very well there was a time that he told uh, Jesus Christ, I would want to come to where you are on the other side of the sea. And uh, Peter uh, took courage and before he reached Jesus' hand, he sank. There was also a time that he, he, Jesus was very uh, angry with him. And he told Peter that get out of me, Satan. And another one that was very serious, he denied Jesus Christ's life. And he said, I don't know him. Even the people around there were telling him that you look like him. Even your speech, the way you are speaking, you look, it is, you are like him. Even your structure. And he said, I don't know him. He was very but with that weakness, something amazing with Jesus Christ, Jesus still loved Peter. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Some of us, we are very, very weak. Especially me. I count myself to be a very, very weak person. In many areas of our, my life, I'm very weak. I get angry, by the way. Even as you look at me and every time I smile to people, I get very angry. And the reason why I have never di displayed my anger, it is normally very bad. So I choose to hold it. Praise be to God. I have other weaknesses. But one thing that I know, one thing that you need to know, in your weaknesses, despite of your weaknesses, your weak nature, Jesus Christ loves you so, so much. Praise be to God. Peter 
denied Jesus Christ in many, you know, occasions. But see what Jesus does to him. Out of the disciples that were there with him taking a meal, he chose Peter. And he addressed Peter. And at the end of the day, Peter went home when he was washed. When he was taken care of. When his spiritual needs, his physical needs were taken care of. I want to tell you that Jesus loves you even when you feel that you are at the weakest point of your life. Jesus loves you so much. Number two, although we are weak, Jesus has a great potential in us. Although we are weak, Jesus sees a very great potential in us. Praise be to God. I don't know where you uh, work or what you do during your day-to-day -day life activity. Because human beings are social beings. I know you socialize with people. And I know there's a class that they, are, that they have placed you. And sometimes people are not ready to give you opportunity to speak, to address people. Maybe at your work, at some point, you need to be uh, appreciated. You need to be given, to be taken to another level. But that is not happening. But I've come here this morning to tell you that uh, uh, although you are weak or you feel you are weak, Jesus sees a great potential in you. People may not see a great potential in you, but Jesus sees a great potential in you. And very soon, sooner than later, he will come through for you. He will minister to you and he will take you to another level. People may not see, but Jesus is seeing it and he is going to take you to another level. Number three, we need to have the character of Jesus, the character of forgiveness. Praise be to God. Jesus is so much forgiving. He is showing it clear to Peter. Because I imagine if this was done to us, what would you have done? Somebody has crucified you. He has really done bad to you. But you still embrace them, however what they have done. Is that something that a human being can do? No. Some of us are here, we are saved, but there are people that we cannot, and we said we will never forgive. You have said that I can do everything, but forgiving John or James, I will never forgive them. And to be sincere, some of us are preachers, maybe like us, but we are not able to forgive other people. But Jesus is God. Jesus is good. Jesus is good because he is forgiving. And he is speaking to us today to have a character of forgiveness. Maybe you are things are stuck because you are not able to forgive. I want to urge you to ask God to give you the grace. That when you leave this and you have somebody that you have not forgiven, just ask God to help you go and forgive that person. Maybe your things are not going on well because you refuse to forgive and yet you are saved. God has called us to forgive because we are singing and saying every day, Nataka ni fanane? Nae. You cannot wezi kufanana na yesu kama wewe si you need to forgive. And the last one is that God is a God of another chance. When you think he is done with us, he is not. Praise be to God. I am sure even the way Peter is answering casually. Jesus, you know I love you. You know, sarcastically, you know I love you. Praise be to God. He knew very well what I had done. Jesus can never forgive me. Remember, this time Jesus is finding them going back to fishing. They have even forgotten what the Lord has done for them. And maybe at some point they say that Ame wawa na ameisha kabi. History mei imeisha. But Jesus extends his uh, 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 love, his hand of love, and gives Peter another chance. Praise be to God. 
you will be and you have been given another chance this morning. I do not know when you enter this door what was coming in your heart. Maybe you came in saying that I know very well Jesus can never forgive me. This is your message this morning. That Jesus and God is a God of another chance. Praise be to God. It doesn't matter what you have done. He will give you another chance. He has given you another chance. You are forgiven this morning. And you can walk tall. You can walk head high. And be able to face the world with a lot of strength. You can be able to face your challenges with a lot of strength. Now, there's a repetition here that is being done the three times. Occasionally, we meet this in the Bible. Even Jesus resurrected on the third day. And sometimes people say that uh, number three is a number of restoration. I want to pray today. May there be restoration in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May there be restoration in every area of your life. In finances, in your behavior, in your words, in your character. May there be restoration in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, there's what we are seeing here. Grace. Grace breaks religion. Grace breaks the law. Grace breaks all odds of life. Because when you look at the grace, us being the Gentiles, we were incorporated in the, in the, in the covenant through grace. The law that was very burdensome, we were able to, uh, to get out of the law that would burden us. And people do things because it is the law that is saying it. Through grace, we were able to be children and the heirs of God. Through grace, my brother and my sister, everything will be okay. That grace has been extended to you today by the Lord. It doesn't matter how deep you are fallen. I am praying this morning, may the grace of the Lord abound in your life. In Jesus' name. May you receive that grace that Peter received. That through what he had done, Jesus extended his grace to him. And he was able to be made whole. May the grace of the Lord make you whole in Jesus' mighty name. I'll conclude by saying, despite all our weaknesses, Jesus embraces us the way we are. He is a good friend forever. Jesus is a good friend forever. And I pray that Jesus will give you a song. And this is the song that I want us to sing. And Jesus will give you your own song that you are able to sing. And you go out singing. And people realize change in your life. Because what happened to Peter after this? He was really empowered. You go to the book of Acts. Many things happened. Miracle happened. He baptized people. People were changed. And I pray that you receive the same grace. You receive the same grace that after this time, things are going to change. Even people around will realize that something has happened to you in Jesus' name. I want us to sing this song, and then I will pray. Just first answer. Amazing grace, how sweet a sound that saved a wretch like me. I was once lost, but now I'm found. But now.
Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name this morning. We honor you for who you are. We miss words to express ourselves on the love and the grace that you have displayed to us. Indeed, God, we can witness your love to us. We have let you down in many, many ways in our lives. Our God, you continue extending your hand to us, your grace to us, and bringing us back to your form. We are sincerely sorry this morning, O oh God. And for where we have fallen, O oh Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on us, forgive us, wash us, and cleanse us, O oh God Almighty. Make us be counted, O oh God, in your fall. And restore us, O oh God, restore the joy of our salvation. And equip us once more, O oh God. Heal us once more. Rejuvenate us once more, O oh God. And send us out, O oh God, to feed the sheep. May this happen this morning, O oh God, to the people who have heard this message. Far and wide, O oh God. May this seed germinate and bear fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.